Hello everybody, welcome back to Virtual School, Physics is Fun. Wan Liao says hello. Okay, have you ever noticed that C looks shallower than what it actually is? Let's look at the picture on the left. This man is looking into the sea. Alright, so he sees the image of this object here. Alright, he sees the image of this object nearer to the surface of the sea and this distance is called apparent depth as compared to the actual distance the actual depth which is called real depth why is that so why does this thing happen this is because of refraction of light now let's recall refraction of light we know that when light propagate from denser medium out to the air which is less dense, light will be refracted away from normal. Okay, so this is normal. Light is refracted away from normal. And the refracted ray goes into the eye of the observer. And we have also learned that image is formed at the intersection of two refracted rays. But these two refracted rays, they are diverging. So if we were to trace them into the water, we see that they converge or they intersect at the, in the water. So the image of this object is formed in the water, which is at the higher position, which is vertically up from the object. Okay? So this is called the apparent depth and the actual depth is called real depth. Let's move on. Let's look at this picture. In a similar situation, if we were to look at the fish from the top instead of from the side, the same thing happened. All right. So light from the object propagate into the air. So from denser medium out to the less dense medium, light is refracted away from normal and enter the eye of the observer. So the intersection of these two refracted ray, which is in the water, is where the image is formed. So the image is formed here. Therefore, the observer sees the image of the fish here in this position. So this from the image to the surface of the water is called apparent depth. And where the actual fish is to the surface of the water, this is called real depth. If we were to take the ratio of real depth to apparent depth, we see that it is a constant value and this constant value is refractive index. Okay, so we use capital D to represent real depth and small d to represent apparent depth. So we have refractive index equals to real depth over apparent depth. Okay, so this is another way to find refractive index. Let's calculate refractive index of water. In this picture here, the object is a point. And the observer sees the image of this point here, okay, which is nearer to the, the observer. So it is at 1.2 meters compared to the real depth, which is 1.6 meters. By using the formula of refractive index equals to real depth over apparent depth, we can calculate the refractive index of water, and in this case, it is 1.33. Alright, now, just now we say that when light propagates from denser medium to less dense medium, it is refracted away from normal. Okay. And because it is refracted away from normal, so the refracted angle is bigger than the 
incident angle. So if we increase the incident angle, obviously the refracted angle will increase too. If we keep on increasing the incident angle and the refracted angle also continue to increase until such a point that the refracted angle is 90 degree. So at this point of uh, incident, at this point of scenario, uh, the incident angle is called critical angle and the symbol is C. So I repeat, uh, when the refracted angle is 90 degree, the incident angle is called critical angle C. Okay, so therefore critical angle C is the angle of incident in angle of incidence in the uh, optically denser medium when the refracted angle in the less dense medium is 90 degree. Okay, so if we were to apply Snell's law, we substitute this incident angle into Snell's law, which is n equals to sine i over sine r. And here, the i is the critical angle and r is 90 degree. And sine 90 degree is 1. Therefore, we have come to another formula of refracted angle, which is 1 over sine c. Yeah, refractive index is also 1 over sine c. Okay. N is refractive index. C is critical angle. So we get another way of finding refractive index, which is 1 over sine c. Now, in conclusion, we have all together four ways to find refractive index. Okay, number one that we have learned is refractive index equals to the speed of light in vacuum over speed of light in a medium. The second one, which we call Snell's law, which is n equals to sine i over sine r. Don't forget, i is in a less dense medium are in the denser medium and we just learned n is equals to real depth over apparent depth too and lastly n is equals to 1 over sine c okay so all together there are four ways to find refractive index so we will apply any of these four depending on the situation okay all right so we will uh, stop here for today and we will continue the next time. Okay, bye-bye.